Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 14 June 2020. Coming to you this evening with a watch review. And the watch we're going to look at tonight, as you might gather from the title and from the packaging you see in front of the camera, is from Zelos. A Zelos watch. A pretty cool little brand I stumbled across in my search for a thousand dollar or less GMT automatic watch. <clears throat> and I stumbled upon the Zelos Horizons GMT because of their extremely aggressive effort to market via social media, specifically on the YouTube. So a couple things that you need to know before we get started. Unlike the vast majority of Zelos watch reviews you see on your common watch channels on YouTube, this is not a review based on a paid endorsement. Not at all. No money changed hands, and I paid full introductory price retail for this watch. Now, the watch we're going to be looking at tonight is the Zelos Horizons version 2 with the Fume teal sunburst dial and the bicolor black and teal bezel in stainless. Okay, so before we get to the watch, let's talk about the packaging. First, we get this exterior cardboard sleeve, and then this rather well-done box. I believe I've seen it referred to as acacia wood. It kind of looks like a blondish mahogany. It's pretty nicely made. Uh -huh. That's kind of where the good stuff ends regarding the packaging. Let's open the lid, and we're greeted with a watch roll. Which, frankly, guys, if this were one of the, let's say, lower-priced Zealous watches, maybe a three or $400 watch, this roll might be acceptable. But at this price point of $749 introductory pricing, frankly, it's just plain cheesy. I've seen many, many reviews of Zealous watches that use this roll. And the reviewers refer to it as leather. It is not. It is bona fide hide of naga, pleather, vinyl, <clears throat> something like that. Um, it kind of looks like distressed love leather if you stand very far away and squint. Okay. Inside the roll, we have the stainless steel bracelet, extra links over in this pouch. <clears throat> in the far right, we have the watch. And this watch comes with the bracelet installed. Uh, this one, as you can see, is wearing a rubber strap. So let's get the stuff out of the way and talk about the watch. Okay. Let's come in a little closer. All right, this is the Zelos Horizons GMT version 2. Let's get into the statistics, the specifications, before we start talking about characterization and review. What we have here is a 316L stainless steel case with a beautiful combination of brushed and polished surfaces. We have circular brushing on the lug tops. We have horizontal brushing on the mid case, a beautiful polished chamfer. And then a, a circular brushed case back. And this, the bottom of the case is also brushed in circular fashion. We have a sapphire crystal and a display back on the horizons. We'll talk about the movement a little later. Dimensions on the case are 40 millimeters diameter, lug to lug of 45, so a nice compact lug to lug. It will wear well on any wrist. 20 millimeter lug width. The height of the watch is 11 millimeters without the boxed and domed sapphire crystal. That adds a whopping 3 millimeters to the thickness of the watch. 
so dual sapphire crystals and then the bezel which is proper for a GMT watch it is a 48 click bi-directional ball bearing ball bearing detent bezel and then it is a bicolor black for night light teal for day it is fully loomed and it also is wearing a layer of sapphire over the pigmented regions of the bezel the strap that I have installed um, <clears throat> I believe is called a tropic strap on Zelos's website and again all reviewers just pass right by that referring to it as a tropic strap I'm kind of here to tell you this is not a genuine tropic brand strap if it is it doesn't look like any tropic I've seen because the end profile is different and it has no Tropic branding anywhere to be found. Does it have a Zello signature? It does not on the rubber, but a beautiful signed Zellos buckle. Again, with a perfect combination of brushed and polished surfaces. And it is a really, really nicely made buckle. Spring bars that are not exposed with drilled holes two keepers and they stay put wherever you put them a very nicely made strap but I don't believe it's a genuine tropic not sure that matters the movement in the version 2 is an ETA 2893 elabore elabore which means highly finished the highly finished version of the 2893 uh, a little asterisk by that if you've seen pictures of the movement in a horizons version one you notice some perlage finishing on the inner workings of the movement and some uh, some helical finishing also those are not present in the version two i asked elshan about that elshan is the founder and apparently the operating owner of Zelos. He says it is still an elaborate movement, just does not have those finished features. And then if you notice the rotor, it is a custom Zelos rotor, and there is a map of the globe laser etched into that sort of rose gold rotor pretty nicely done you're going to get 200 meters of water resistance on the horizons gmt with the screw down case back and the screw down crown now the eta 2893 some might say is not a true gmt because the local time hour hand does not have a jump hour feature so you'll notice I'm at the first position after the pop. That's going to give you hand winding. The second position is going to give you date change, rolling it back toward you, and then GMT hand jump in 30 minute increments by rolling it forward going to wait for the second hand to come to 12 pull it to the third position and it's going to hack and allow you to set the time <clears throat> um, so although it does not have a, a jump hour for the local time hour hand it's a pretty functional and well used well traveled GMT movement the 2893 uh, I will say that I don't I don't know if Zelos does any in-house adjustment and regulation but this top level 2893 movement is in fact the most accurate mechanical watch I own and it's off the correct way for me um, 
I've, I've owned this watch for a little over two weeks and I've worn it about half the time I've owned it. So about maybe seven or eight days it's been on my wrist. I can tell you that it gains 1.5 to 2 seconds per day and it doesn't seem to care whether it's on my wrist or in, in its case uh, dial up, crown up, it doesn't care. It's extremely accurate. Why do I say that's the correct way for it to be off? I like a watch to run a little a little quick so that when it does gain enough time that I feel like it needs to be set, all I have to do is hack it and wait for my reference timer to catch up, push the crown in and go. Uh, it's just a beautiful mechanical piece of work. I gotta give you that, Zelos. Let's push that crown in and screw it down. So, <clears throat> you know what? I forgot to do a wrist check. Let's take a look. I'm wearing, in my opinion, the finest automatic 200 meter professional dive watch for under $1,000 money can buy. This is the Gen 3 Green Sumo or the Bad Sushi Sumo, as I like to call it. Just let that sink in for a second. Okay, everybody's got it. I bought this actually pre-owned from an individual on eBay. And this was the Hodinkee Shop edition with the green fitted crafter blue rubber strap that smells like vanilla. Just a beautiful piece of work. It comes with the stainless steel keeper and I did get a hold of Crafter Blue and have them send me some green keepers because that stainless keeper is a scratch magnet. <clears throat> so yeah, I love this watch. Love it, love it, love it. Love the 6R3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, back to the Horizons version 2. Should we put this on wrist and see how it wears? Let's just do. I'll bring it back on the bracelet toward the end of the video. Because this actually is moving along to a new home, and the gentleman I traded with would like it on bracelet. So, bracelet he shall have. Okay, here it is on wrist. Love the way the rubber strap keeps the watch in place. Uh huh. It lies very nicely. On my 7 and 1 8 inch wrist, it is super well proportioned. It's just a great wearer. Absolutely. Still has good wrist presence because of the colors and the way that boxed domed crystal distorts and plays with the light. It's all good. So I want to talk a little bit about <clears throat> what I've observed from Zelos. Um, I think Elshan is running a very adventurous little micro brand. Um, here's why I say that. He loves to experiment with colorways and materials. Uh, I've looked over most of their product line and a lot of it I don't like. Um, most of the divers are kind of big and tall and chunky. Um, over Bill and those of you who are watching this video because you, you like my knife content you're you're gonna pick up a common theme um, not a big fan of overbuilt stuff usually overbuilt overbuilt means too big clunky and heavy for the job it needs to perform without really much if any advantage in utility Okay, and most of Zealous' stuff kind of gives me that impression, which is why I really admire the effort in the Horizons GMT. Uh, a GMT watch that's only 40 millimeters in diameter is kind of rare, and it presents its own set of challenges. Um, and this watch kind of suffers from the results of kind of not meeting those challenges, I guess. Um, first of all, you kind of need to maximize the area of the dial on a GMT watch if its GMT function is actually going to be usable, legible, readable. Um, 
and Elshan has maximized the dial size by using a bezel that is very narrow. So there's not much real estate on which to print markers, numerals. You can see even numbers are delineated with Arabic numerals on that bezel. Um, if you have 55 year old eyes like I do, good luck reading them in anything but direct sunlight and probably with your reading glasses. And it is a fully loomed bezel, but I have to tell you, you'll not be reading them uh, in the dark with loom, uh, especially in the teal portion of that bezel. And the reason being is that the pigment seems to be kind of translucent and the loom of the numerals washes out with the loom from the teal. A little bit easier to read in the black section of the bezel. There are actually two GMT tracks on this watch. I bet you even haven't even seen the other one. Let me tilt it so you can. There is a chapter ring. It is teal in color, about the same color as the light portion of the bezel. The odd numbers are marked with white bar indices and then the even numbers on the chapter ring are in yellow. If you're looking at the watch straight on, you can't see any of those because of the profile of the crystal. So you have to tilt it and then again, you're gonna need pretty good illumination to make out the chapter ring. So really you have to be sort of an experienced GMT watch user much like we are with uh, with 12 hour dials without thinking we don't need numbers right once you're sort of experienced in using the GMT function on a watch like this you don't really need the numerals to know the time you, can, you know where the sixes are or you know where the twelves are you know where the sixes are you, you divide each baton marker by two etc okay I mentioned the 48 click bezel. Uh, why is that correct? Because in Europe especially, time zones are graduated by 30 minute intervals. And you notice 48 clicks is one every half hour. And then if you were paying attention while I was doing the time set, you notice that the GMT hand moves in 30 minute increments. So that's very well thought out stuff. I was a little disappointed in the chapter ring. If you guys have seen video or still pictures of the version one of the Horizons, the chapter ring came out from the edge of the dial about twice as far, and it was at a less acute angle. So uh, you didn't have to look at it at as, as severe an angle to make out what was written. And then there was obviously more surface area for printing. And then the markers on the dial were actually inset into that chapter ring, which I think looked a little cooler. All these little niggles, frankly, guys, um, if I were a 30 year old guy with 2020 up close vision, none of that would probably bother me. Let's talk about the colors. First of all, the teal dial is an absolute stunner. The first couple days I owned this watch, I kind of wanted to return it. I actually sent to Elshan an email kind of expressing some of my gripes and he was uh, very quick to respond appreciated the criticism and said if you want to send it back you just have to pay for postage i elected to keep it but <clears throat> while waiting for his response i also posted it in the zealous timekeepers facebook group and actually today had a young man uh, inquire about it i hadn't taken the post down even though i'd kind of decided to keep it Anyway, he has a uh, Midnight Blue Swordfish version, too, that we're going to trade and make up a little difference in cash. So I look forward to seeing that. And he's going to give this to, I think, his father-in-law for Father's Day. Pretty cool gift. Mm -hmm. So the dial's stunning. I love the yellow accent colors, the, the text for GMT, and then the... Uh, the GMT hand is framed in yellow. That looks beautiful. Uh, the teals work together well. 
you have a dark teal that is sort of gradient going to black as it radiates from the center. And then the teal in the bezel is a very light teal. And then the date window is also a lighter teal. It would be very hard to match that date wheel because the dial isn't a consistent color. It definitely moves around a little. The applied markers catch light beautifully and they are deep filled. You have two different colors of Super Luminova C3 and BGW9 and we'll kind of look at that when we do the loom shot. Even the white minute indices on the dial are loomed. They're not very bright and they don't last very long, but they are loomed. All four hands are loomed, as well as that bezel, as I talked about before. The applied Zelos logo is stunning and it catches light very, very nicely. By the way, everything on this watch lines up. The alignment of the hands uh, at specific moments in time is beautiful. The bezel aligns beautifully. The uh, coined edge, super easy to grab with very firm bezel action between each click with no back play. It's just very, very nicely done. I have to say, I appreciate the difficulty for a micro brand like Zealous, who really doesn't manufacture everything. They're very adventurous, as I said, with their colors, and they have to source all these components. So it's kind of hit and miss, right? Uh, some of the color combinations look awesome. I think this is one that does. Some of them you look at and you go, ooh, man, what were you thinking, Elshon? But I think to some degree, it's a surprise every time they start putting these together with how the colors are going to work together. This one does great. One other gripe about this watch, and this was my biggest one. Take a look at the minute hand. I love its length. I love how it reaches clear to the chapter ring, reaches through the minute track. But notice how the hour hand is blunt at the end, but the minute hand is more blunt and wider than the hour hand. When it's at the 32nd position, it completely, completely obliterates two minute indices. Um, I, I like long minute hands. The reason I like long minute hands is because I like to be able to read them precisely. But when you have a big, fat, honking minute hand that obliterates two markers at the same time, you kind of defeat the purpose of having a long minute hand, just my opinion. Again, that's just a little thing that after I wore the watch a few days and I was just stricken by its beauty every time I looked at it, I kind of thought, ah, who cares? It's just gorgeous. And so well made. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to shut the camera off and do a little surgery. Put the bracelet on for you guys. And we'll take a look at that. Okay, guys, here is the Horizons GMT V2 on bracelet. A really, really nice piece, by the way. Sort of a flattened oyster style. Very nice drape. All brushed on the surface and then beautifully chamfered with polished chamfers and then brushed edges. Super nicely done. And then yes, your eyes do not deceive you. Those are screw links. A fully milled clasp with six micro adjusts. No diver's extension. It is not a dive watch, although it has 200 meters of water resistance. Nice satisfying snap that seems to be getting better with age. And the fold over security clasp signed with a fairly deeply etched Zelos logo. 
this is going to wear very well because it is all brushed on the surfaces that contact anything. Show it to you on wrist. And again, this is sized for my mostly 7 and 8 inch wrist. And <clears throat> you get a lot of lengths with these. I think I've got like 3 out of one side and 2 out of the other. I like my clasp to be right in the middle of the bottom of my wrist where it naturally wants to be with my bones and tendons so the watch head doesn't walk on me and this is just perfect. It's a good looking bracelet. It's a well constructed bracelet. It's easy to size. My only niggle with the bracelet is the end links. They are solid. They're well made. But I don't know if the camera is going to pick this up. But they have an odd wavy contour. Especially on the, <clears throat> the side panels of the end link. That don't quite match the contour of the bracelet. And then I'd like to see more definition in that. That milled sort of center portion. It's not dimension, dimensional enough for my taste. It just looks like it's kind of bland where it meets the, the watch head. Which is kind of too bad because if you notice, the watch head has these beautiful polished chamfers coming down to the bracelet. They get kind of washed out by the not quite perfectly executed profile of the end links. When we look at the end links on the back, they do tend to mark up the watch case a little bit because they have these tabs that sort of hang over the lugs to help give it rigidity. But it does make uh, reinstalling a bit of a chore. The guy I'm trading with for this watch asked if I would reinstall the bracelet. So I did because I got good tools and a rudimentary skill set. He was probably a little intimidated by doing that. Okay, nothing left but the loom shot. So I'm going to charge this baby up and come back to you in darkness. So there is your loom. Notice you have that greenish cast or cyan colored super luminova on the hands and most of the indices, except for the GMT hand, which is over there about 730. It's going to be blue. And then most of the bezel is in blue. It's pretty hard to see. Not exactly the loom monster characteristic that we're used to seeing from Zelos, but still plenty legible to tell what time it is. As long as you're trying not, not trying to use the outer bezel ring, because that loom is pretty weak, at least on this one. It does seem to hang on a fair amount. It's certainly not luma bright, but it's pretty well done. And the most important loomed surfaces on the watch do last a long time and they're pretty bright. So overall, what do I think of the Horizons GMT version 2 from Zelos? Well, I think I kind of picked the best color I could pick unless I were going to go for that frost dial, that fully loomed dial and the black and white bezel, which might have worked a little better. But the more I wore this, the more I was just stricken by its beauty. And as I became more familiar with reading the GMT function on this watch, the less the legibility of the Arabic markers on the chapter ring and the bezel became important to me. I think it's a pretty cool effort. It needs a better minute hand, though. Elshan, it needs a better minute hand. If it's going to be a long minute hand that extends through the minute track, it needs to have a point so you can read everything. But other than that, I think Zelos is doing some pretty cool stuff. I'm looking forward to having in my possession that version 2 Swordfish in Midnight Blue. So stay tuned, guys. That one will be coming soon. This one is on its way to Chris. He actually lives an hour and a half from here, so we're going to meet in the town my daughter attends college and we're going to just swap in the parking lot of a cool little diner tomorrow so that'll be fun that's all for this one my friends grace to you and peace 
from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, the word is sharp, and God our Father is always right on time. We'll talk to you soon.